Corporal Stuart McLaughlin of the 3rd Battalion Parachute Regiment was just 27 when he was killed in action during the Falklands War. Commanding officers at the time recommended him for a gallantry medal for his heroism, but that citation was lost. And despite an appeal, the government decided not to on award an honour. And Corporal McLaughlin's family and former comrades have since campaigned for the decision to be overturned. Up to a 1,000 supporters, including members of the SAS, the Parachute Regiment and the Royal Marines, will today march on Downing Street to petition Mr Cameron on the issue. John Ross, Corporal McLaughlin's platoon sergeant, good morning. Good morning. And his son Stuart McLaughlin are here in the studio with us. Hi, Stuart. Hi, um, John Ross, tell us what you know about the circumstances in which Corporal McLaughlin lost his life, but why he was originally cited for an award. Well, back in the, the night of the 11th, 12th of June, 1982, um, three para attacked Mount Longdon. Mount Longdon subsequently became the bloodiest battle in the Falklands campaign. There was 23 men killed, and it was a long, protracted and fragmented fight. At one stage, we, we'd lost a bit of momentum, particularly in the left flank of the attack, and Corporal McLaughlin, when um, officers had been wounded, um, platoon sergeant killed, Corporal McLaughlin took control of all the men around him and done some quite amazing things that night. And uh, some examples, he, he broke cover, he exposed himself to the enemy and um, led his men um, in this saver position. He took out an enemy position in his own. When one of the guys was wounded, Corporal McLaughlin broke cover again and went out and dragged that guy back. Now, that action in its own would merit the highest award in any campaign. And um, subsequently, we were very shocked when the awards came out in September. After the campaign, we got back in July when there was no award for Stuart McLaughlin. And this was many years ago, but why wasn't he, having been recommended, given the award? Well, the confidentiality of the award system, we wouldn't have known as soldiers who was recommended and who wasn't recommended. And back in 1982, we were still serving soldiers. It, it was a shock that Corporal McLaughlin didn't get an award, but we accepted it. We accepted it, and um, that that was the way things were. It was only in the um, subsequent months um, that Corporal McLaughlin's father became aware that he had been cited for an award, and he got that information from the officer who actually wrote the initial citation. And Corporal McLaughlin's father started... Um, not a campaign as such, but to raise the issue. And he raised that over 30 years ago, 32 years ago. And sadly, he's since died. But you have taken on the campaign now. What? How old were you at the time when your father died, Stuart? I was four months old when my father was killed. Right. Um, but I, my family took over. But my granddad carried out the campaign originally. Yeah. Um, my uncle then continued it after my grandfather died. And then I've, I've took it over with, with my uncle's assistance, but it's a, it's a whole family thing. But this is something you've obviously learned about as you've grown up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've always known the stories of my father's heroism um, in the battle. Uh, and the guys who served with him have, have, you know, told me everything that happened. But what's amazing is after all this time, there are still people out there who feel really passionately about this. People not necessarily directed directly connected to the family who want to come out and show their support. Yeah, well, I mean... There's people who aren't directly connected who obviously see an injustice and it, it should be put right. Um, there's, there's, last year when, when I met up with some of the guys, one of them said to me that he owes his life to me, me dad and that if it wasn't for me dad, he wouldn't have seen his daughter, so he'd do anything. So it just shows you how much he meant. Yeah. Uh, John, the MOD says they launched an investigation into his citation last year, found no new information or evidence that he was treated differently from the other servicemen who were considered for an award. He was one of many servicemen whose bravery was singled out by commanding officers but did not result in a gallantry medal. So he wasn't alone, in other words. Well, that's absolute nonsense. Um, Corbin McLaughlin's citation, we have from the commanding officer that he wrote the citation... We have the evidence from the guy who typed them up that he did not type the citation. It was chaotic conditions in Port Stanley when these citations were being handwritten, literally within hours in the early days after the battle. And ordinarily, would that written citation alone have been enough then to guarantee the medal? If it was based on the actions of um, what Corporal McLaughlin done, absolutely, right. absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so we, we categorically know that no citation ever was subject to due process. Uh, the inquiry, which was launched by Anna Subri, um, concentrated on looking at some old archive entries of notebook entries that they found. 
and they presented as evidence to us an incomplete list. And we know it was incomplete because people who were successful didn't weren't on it. Are you optimistic then, Stuart? Yeah, I mean, I, I do think the government will eventually do the right thing. It's just how long it's going to take them. Um, but yeah, they, they've, they've got to do the right thing. Thank you very much to both of you for your time today. Stuart McLaughlin and John Ross, who is Corporal McLaughlin's platoon sergeant at the time.